This week we mark International Press Freedom Day at a time when the freedom of the press seems to be under attack from all sides. Back in 2015, Pulitzer Prize winning reporter James Risen promised to, quote, spend the rest of his life fighting to undo damage done by to press freedom by Barack Obama. But things have only gotten worse under the Biden regime. The nonprofit group Reporters Without Borders just published a new report which shows the U.S. now ranks 45th globally when it comes to press freedoms, just below the African nations of Namibia, Namibia and East Timor. Now, meanwhile, Barack Obama used Press Freedom Day to lecture us about the dangers of disinformation in today's media. The clip which he recorded for the Columbia School of Journalism, the former president talks about this. And a spoiler alert here, he failed to mention anything about the coordinated suppression of the Hunter Biden laptop story, the lack of coverage of his administration's surveillance of the Trump campaign, his attempts to lock journalists in prison for refusing to reveal their sources. But here's what he did say. I want to challenge all of you to think about how you can make a difference, both individually and collectively, to the cause, not of any particular politics or political party, but to the cause of facts and accuracy and truth and credibility. Oh. How rich. The Obama regime also illegally surveilled Newsmax chief White House correspondent James Rosen and even his parents. James Rosen's parents were surveilled, too, when James was working at Fox. The FBI called him a, quote, criminal co-conspirator conspirator for publishing uh, reports uh, on North Korea and nuclear threats. They were classified reports, but James had access to them. Now, the Associated Press in 2013 reported that the U.S. government's aggressive prosecution of leaks and efforts to control information are having a chilling effect on journalists and government whistleblowers. The former executive editor of The Washington Post, Leonard Downey Jr., wrote at the time, quote, the Obama administration and the press, in part, he writes this, the government officials in the Obama administration are increasingly afraid to talk to the press. The administration's war on leaks and other efforts to control information are the most aggressive that have been seen since the Nixon administration. Now, the Obama White House also produced their own content and distributed it on social media. They barred the press uh, photographers from being in certain situations. They had their own press photographer. They kept journalists out of meetings uh, when the president met with major figures. And it's scary to think that President Obama or his content would be allowed anywhere near these young, impressionable journalists. And on, by the way, we did get a report on James Rosen's parents. They came out of this unscathed, despite the surveillance by the Obama administration. They are still happy and healthy and living together. So there's that. Let's welcome in now former uh, Georgia State Representative Vernon Jones. He's also the founder of Wake Up America, not to be confused with Wake Up America here on Newsmax. Great to see you, <laughs> Vernon. Good to see you guys. Always a pleasure. So um, I think we still see this. And I think it's gotten worse under President Biden based on the just outright lies that we hear from him. Yeah, actually it's 2.0. Obama started with 1.0, surveilling, like you mentioned, our journalists and others to other American people. And the hypocrisy of him talking about facts mattered. When you look at his administration, and when you look at how the media is a part of his administration, it's an extended arm, how they hid the spine on a, a, a presidential campaign, a presidential president elect. It went on and on and on, and to hear him say that really is just very disappointing. Really, that was an ad that he did for this particular organization, right. a political ad. Right. You know, the, uh, President Trump called the press the enemy of the people, and one of the reasons why I think it's appropriate to do so is because it's like a codependent relationship. They get abused by the Democrats, but still they suck up to them every single day. Well, the Democrats is carrying their water, and, and they're carrying the Democrats' water. So it's kind of like a, a love-hate relationship. But when we talk about freedom of the press, where is freedom of the press now? Really, it's freedom for the press to shape a narrative. Right. And if you're not on, their, on board with their narrative, then they come at you, and they work with the deep state in coming after you as well. Well, we got another job, too, for the vice president, Kamala Harris. She's meeting with the top execs of Google, Microsoft, and OpenAI today. She's apparently our new artificial intelligence czar, no pun intended. Um, how are you feeling about this? You think she can handle it? Well, she, to me, she is a, a cause looking for an issue. 
or you can turn it around. She's an issue <laughs> looking for a cause. She has no substance. Um, she probably come out better meeting with a group of first graders. Um, she ha doesn't have the depth of the business community or the intellect, and really she's just, again, looking for a cause to champion, when in fact, it is important to meet with corporate CEOs. We need to look at this economy. We need to look at how government is getting in the way of private sector, wanting to punish those who are successful, who are out there creating jobs. And as a matter of fact, they're hurting, their policies are hurting uh, corporate CEOs, companies, and, and its employees. So uh, it's, it's ironic. She was, should, should be the last one. Yeah. She, she should be the last one that should be meeting with them, I can tell you that. Yeah, and I, I, you know, whether it's her or anybody else in the federal government, I have very little faith in their ability to regulate AI or do anything with it. They've been so bad about regulating social media or you know dealing with that as well one last topic for you too to go back to the Obamas uh, did you hear that Michelle Obama I don't, she's not running for president but she is starting a new food company to try and fight childhood obesity a little bit of a tough sell to do this I think considering the last time she did this or got involved with food all the kids in America basically rejected <laughs> Her, her plan. What do you think she's up to here? Well, first of all, she's from inner city Chicago, knows nothing about farming, uh, and then she wants to all of a sudden be an expert on vegetables and growing vegetables and this and that. She needs to go and take some agricultural classes, learn about farming, understanding farming, and like you said, she was direct, rejected before, so this is probably going to be the second rejection to come up with a soft drink for young people. I think there are a lot more things she could be doing and a lot more issues she could be addressing. I think that's a waste of time. Vernon, real quickly, we got about a minute left here. I just wanted to touch on it at the Atlanta shooting yesterday. It seems like it was an amazing job by law enforcement. Well, let me tell you, that's why I support the men and women in blue. Supporting law enforcement is important. You don't defund them. You give them more additional funding. Uh, when you look at what happened, how they coordinate their efforts, how they had the people sharing information, citizens calling in, uh, using the pinpoint where the guy was you know, using phones or people trying to commu commute with him, communicate with him, him communicate with others. Uh, obviously, it all worked out. But let me tell you, the issue here, that mother was crying out for her son. There's a mental illness mm -hmm. issue here. We don't need gun control. We need to get, a contr get control of mental illness. If we can give billions to illegals coming to this country, billions to Ukraine, and we can't allocate more resources for mental illness, which is a very serious issue, that's what's out of control. That's what needs to be controlled. Yeah, it's interesting to hear the mother talk about the mental illness issue, but the mayor of Atlanta, Andre Dickens, came out yesterday, and like all Democrats do, goes right to gun control. Well, that's, that's their playbook, especially during an election. They want you to think, Guns are the ones that's killing people, not their bad policies, not how they reward criminals as opposed to punishing them and that there be some type of, of uh, uh, recourse, uh, I should say some type of action held against them. They're not held accountable. So you get out, almost get out of jail free if you commit a crime. And so it's their policy. But I, I like the mayor. I think he's a nice person, but he's way off to the left on this issue. Yeah. Great to see you, Vernon Jones. Stop Thank by you. and see us more often, too, when you Thank get down you. here. Love Newsmax, number one. Take care, man.